rings the bell, dog starts salivating, rings the bell, dog starts salivating. And it was kind of made that way through pairing with different stimuli. So the dog naturally starts drooling when there's food. So just prior to giving the dog food, they would ring a bell, or in our instance, it's going to be a clicker. They would hit the clicker, and then the dog associates that with some kind of reward. And the original experiment, it was food, so the dog would start salivating. So that's kind of a little gist on classical conditioning. Operating conditioning is slightly different, but it accomplishes a lot of the same goals. Here's another piece of equipment. We're going to be doing something that they know about, right? So we'll kind of just jump into it since I messed that up a little bit and he's ready to go. <laughs> We're going to do a narcotic detection kind of demo for you guys. Um, there's three different boxes that we're going to go to. One of them has an odor, so you guys know right off the top it's going to be the one closest to you guys so you can see the behavior that he gives. So when we train them, we want to know when they find that substance that we're talking about, one of those five assigned drug odors. So we have to get some kind of behavior out of them. It changes by the dog, but it's the only thing that really matters is for the handler to be able to identify the behavior that the dog's giving. That indicates that it is, there is some kind of trained odor wherever he is. So it changes by dog, canine cams, it depends on the level or the height of the find. If it's low, he might lay down for it, he might sit for it, and if it's high, he sometimes stands and freezes and looks at it, but you'll be able to see a pretty clear difference. So you'll see on that one, he didn't show much interest. Similar to this one, he's smelling, he's not really finding anything that he knows yet. Gonna wait him out until he gives us that us that final response that we're looking for. Right now it changes a little bit with him being on slippery floors and being able to move it. He's trying to cheat, he's not sitting down all the way. <laughs> I know, okay. <laughs> and we don't pay him or reward him until he actually gets to that final step. Dogs are extremely the main reason that we keep the commands is because it makes sense. He already learned German commands, there's not much of a reason for us to change them whatsoever. It's more natural for the dog. Um, for obedience, we use a different type of toy. It's a, it's a tug. So yes, something that he bites on, kind of lets him get some energy out. It develops his bite. It kind of works on his jaw muscles too. So it's helpful all around. Um, he's a pretty strong dog. He's about 83 pounds. So. Anyways, with the obedience, I keep it under my armpit, as you'll see, it keeps his head in a good position to where he's looking at me, and then every once in a while, we break from the obedience to reward him too. So he'll get the toy, we get to play around a little bit, and then he'll get back into obedience, and that teaches a few different things too. It teaches um, obedience under different kinds of pressure, and it teaches him how to change from one activity to another relative. The English, it's seats, you throw a Z on the end of there, Cam house. Seats. So he's real excited, he wants a toy, he's anticipating. So seats is his uh, sit down command, he has plots, which is his lay down command. He has a heel command, which is where he'll get his right shoulder up to the, pretty much where my left knee is. Cam, foos, that's his heel command if I want him to come back to me. He has a break command too, whatever we're doing doesn't matter the exercise. Yes to him just means that he can break whatever he's doing and he knows it's time to play. Yes. So he usually gets his toy, comes back to be paid. Um, he has a bark command and he has a few different ones depending on what kind of activity we're doing too. So for the narcotic detection, the one we gave him was find Rauschgift, find drugs. Um, he has some different bite commands depending on what situation we're in. He has a tracking command. Um, already he's kind of in the position he knows we're do what we're doing based on what we have with us the leash that we're using the toy that he's using so he's starting to get used to it even without being given a command we'll go over some of those commands the first command seats plots we'll do a down and route command as well something that's helpful with the down and route 
is that it stops him from doing something that he was intending to do before. So to put that into action, say he was sent to go bite somebody. For whatever reason, that person surrendered. We no longer want to bite that person. We have to have enough control over the dog to be able to stop them or have them come back to us. So we'll practice some of those. And foos. Foos. And his goal is to stay as close to me as possible. So we'll do the down and rod. I'm going to throw it. He might jump up a little bit. Blah. He might jump up a little bit. We'll tell him to go get it and then we'll stop him or have him come back to me while he's on the way over there. Lots. And we do different kind of uh, lengths of time before we release him too. We don't want him to get into his head that as soon as he lays down, he can break and then go get it. So you'll see different time periods in between when we break him. Yes. <laughs> Stand still. Relax. Now, boost. Yes, command there again. It broke the exercise. Now he's done. He should bring it back in. Stop! Yes. Let's see it. So he can bark on command too. Um, it's about all I have for you right now that I can think.